Uh, there are some great churches here in Harrison County, and, and it's an honor for us to, to serve alongside of them. And thank you so much for choosing Create Church for, for celebrating Easter this morning. You know, every church has a slightly different mission, purpose. I think God made it that way so that we're not just for one certain type of people, but so we have churches that fit every family and every season of life. But here at Create Church, our, our mission is to do really just three things, and they're all centered around, around the parts of our mission. Discovering God, we think it's so important. It's, it's giving people the opportunity to, who maybe, maybe didn't grow up in a church or maybe never heard about, about the God who, who loves you and has a purpose and a plan for your life. And so that's what Sunday mornings are for us. We want to have a place where everything we do, kind of the way we do worship, the songs we pick, the, the way we do the, the kids' ministry, um, everything's really, it's for, it's for you. It's for you, it's for your family, friends, people that are maybe far from God. Um, we just want to help people discover God. Next, we also want to help people grow closer to him. Like we, we want this to be a good experience for Christians as well, and we want to help you grow now, a lot of us don't grow just by hearing something, just by learning stuff. It's like no one learns how to ride a bike by reading the bike manual. The bike manual is probably, it's really good, but you actually learn by doing something. And that's why we have our create team. It's not just to make coffee and to blow up balloons and to, and to set up things, get things ready for you and to take care of kids, but it's really a place where we can practice serving people and loving people. We think that that's a great way to help us grow closer to God. And then winning at life, the Bible calls this being an overcomer. It's probably the most underrated, but probably the most important part of this whole process. It just means when life hits you, you just keep going. You never, you never stop. And to do that that takes people, that takes other, that takes friends. That's why we have small groups. It's just to get you connected to people who can support you and love you through the ups and the downs. So that's what we're here. That's, we're really simple. We just do these three things. Um, so I invite you, you're probably here somewhere, and it's not like you have to go from one to two to three. We're all kind of growing. I'm, I'm discovering new things about God every Sunday, and I, I love that. I, there's always opportunities to grow and always opportunities to keep winning, overcoming. And so I invite you on this, on this journey if you want to join us. And on that, on that survey, there's a place there for next steps. Maybe you've, maybe you've already made a decision for Jesus, but you haven't made it public through baptism. If you're curious about that, doesn't mean you have to do anything. Just check that off and we'll get some information to you. Um, maybe you want to um, get involved with the Create team. And that starts with our growth track. And we have a, a wait list for that. You can fill that out here. and just we'll, we'll put you on the wait list, let you know the next time we've got an opening for that. Um, help me find a small group. We would be honored to help plug you in. We have a teen small group as well. So we've got opportunities here for you and invite you to be on the part of the process. One of my favorite Easter verses comes from Romans chapter 8 of all places. The Spirit of God, and remember the Holy Spirit always comes with power. He comes, when he comes on people, he's bringing power for, for a changed life, for miraculous things to happen. And this same Holy Spirit was, is powerful enough to bring a body back to life. So however much power that takes, he lives in you too. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he's going to give life to your, the things in your life that are dead, to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. What's this mean? It means that we're not just here to celebrate something that happened 2,000 years ago. We are, we are here to celebrate our resurrected King. We are here. We are doing that. 
But it's not just that. There is also power for you that can change your life, can, can make things alive in your life that maybe you thought were dead. Maybe you feel that way right now. Maybe you feel like there's part of you that's, that's dead. Maybe it's, maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your thoughts. Maybe it's your career. It's, it's something that, you know, other people wouldn't guess is going bad with your life or is wrong. But you know in your heart that, man, I'm, I'm dying inside. This is, a, this is painful. This isn't good. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's relationships. And I want to say that today is the day that God can bring you back to life. His, he's in the job of, of giving life. Let me say it like this, is that the resurrected king can resurrect you. He can bring things back to life that you think have been dead for a long time. Now, a lot of Christians have told me, Nathan, I read my Bible, I go to church every week. I'm even on the Create team. I'm, I give. I help. I volunteer. I'm just, I'm just doing everything I can, and I'm not feeling any resurrection. I'm not feeling any new life going on in my life. Because there's a catch. And it's actually right here on the screen. It's that Jesus has to be king. That's a, that's a little bit of a difference for some of us. Some of us like the, the forgiving God and, you know, the Easter happy, you know, making everything alive God. But we don't always come and call him or make him our king. The topic of our series this month has been Jesus is the one. We've talked about how he's, he's our one true friend. He's our one, one true teacher. Today, I want to talk about how Jesus is, he's the one true king. He really is. In fact, all the songs that we sang, I don't know if you noticed that, but they talked about Jesus as king. Talked about his crown, diadem, on a throne. And so my job, I've got one job today. And it's just to show you how Jesus is king and how Jesus can be your king. Let me ask you a quick uh, a quiz question here. Do you know what the one charge was against Jesus that put him on the cross? What was the one charge that put Jesus on the cross? I don't know if I would have been able to answer this like a week ago, just thinking about it, but the one thing that put him on the cross comes from Matthew 27. Jesus was standing before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, and he asks, are you king of the Jews? Because that's what Jesus had been claiming, that he was a king. And I love Jesus' answer here. He says, you said it. You said it. Like that was, that was the thing that broke them. That was the thing that made them, the Jews, the religious people, so upset. Is that Jesus claimed to be their king. What happened next is that he was flogged. We talked about that a little bit last week, but then they took him into the praetorium. The guards, the soldiers took him back there and they spat at him and they mocked him. And they mocked him because of what he said. Look at this. They even twisted together a crown of thorns and they, and they put that on his head. They even put a staff in his hand. Now, there's something unusual here. They, they, didn't all, they didn't do this to everyone. They didn't put a crown of thorns on everyone's head who they're going to crucify. That was, it was unusual. They just did it for Jesus. First time, last time that they did it. They were mocking him because of what he said he was, who he said he was, that he was a king. And then they, they actually knelt in front of him and they mocked him, calling him a king. And I think... I'm not trying to step on any toes this morning, but I think a lot of people, even some Christians, mock Jesus. Maybe unintentionally, intentionally, I don't know. But like they love, they love the forgiving Jesus, the Easter Jesus, the, the, the humble Jesus, the, the gracious Jesus. And he, he is all that. 
but they don't, they don't like the King Jesus. They'll even take his Bible and say, hey, I, you know, I don't want to do this. Jesus says to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ignore that. They're just twisting a crown of thorns. They, they'll say, hail king to the Jews. And then above, their, above his head, they placed this, this written charge, and it was written in, in three languages, in Hebrew and Aramaic, or Greek, and Aramaic and Latin. And what it says was, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. The whole reason he went to the cross is because he claimed to be a king. And the truth is that he was a king. They killed him. He died, and three days later, he rose back to life again. And now he's sitting at the throne next to God. He is the risen king. Can I hear a good amen? That's what we're celebrating today. He is the king. At the end of Jesus' story is, that, is about Jesus as king. And when you go to the very end of the Bible, about two pages before the end of the book, it says, I saw heaven standing open. And there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. Those are his names. With justice, he judges and wages war. Doesn't sound like the kind, meek Jesus right there, right? His eyes are like blazing fire. And on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. They know him as the nice Jesus and the, the kind Jesus, but he's much more than that. He is that. He is the humble and gracious and forgiving, but he's also dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God, meaning I've, I've already spoken. I've said it. And on his robe, on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is, this is the true Jesus, and he is king. We should praise him for that. All right, well, this is the theology part of it. This is what the Bible says about it, but I really want to make this personal for you this morning. And I want to ask this question. Is he? Because... You might know his other names, and I'm not diminishing the faithful and kind and forgiving. In fact, I talk about that a lot. For me, I, I love those names as much as anyone. But he's also, he's also a king. He's the one true king. I think it's hard for us to understand even what this means because we all, we, we've grown up in a democracy. You know, we've, we don't live with a king. In a democracy, it's we the people. It's all, it's all about us. We're the ones that kind of get a chance to call the shots. In fact, we, our opinion, our vote matters. If we don't like a, a, a law, we can change it. If we don't like someone who's, we can vote them out. And that's because we are self-ruled. And let me be super clear. I love this form of government for states and for countries here on this earth. This, this is great. But God wasn't writing the Bible with a democracy in mind. He was, you know, sometimes we try to barter with God. Like, God, how about, uh, how about we don't do this? Instead, let's try this. Or we try to rewrite his words. Like, God, this passage here, I don't, I don't care for it. I'm going to ignore it. Or I'm going to change it. No, no, we can't really do that. In a kingdom, the preamble to the New Testament is in the beginning was the word. It's not about you and me. It really isn't. It's all about Jesus and what he says. And I really don't have an opinion or a vote. And personally, when I read God's word, I don't, I don't always agree with everything that I read in there. I don't have an opinion. I obey it. I, I have to do that because I, I am God-ruled. 
And you know, if you don't like this idea of being God ruled, I just want to remind you that when you, when you become, when you become a Christian, when you decide to make him your king, you're not a subject. No, no, you're not, you're not a servant. He makes you a part of his royal family. He gives you everything he has. It's, it's amazing how much he gives when you decide to crown him the king. And I think a lot of people just don't quite understand him as king. They love his other attributes, but they don't love his absolutes. And so the resurrection power doesn't work for them. They think they're getting, they want a changed life from God. They want these things that he offers to the people who follow him, but they don't get it. And I wonder why. I mean, could it be that our relationship with God is a lot more about the other titles than about him being our king? And I want to suggest that if you, if you want to see God's power in your life, that you crown him Lord of all, that you crown him, that you make him your king. We sang it all morning that Jesus isn't just the savior, but he's, he can be your king when you choose to crown him. And let me say it this way, and this is, this is a sentence that kind of summarizes the whole message in a couple lines, is that the resurrection power of Jesus is available to you at the level of your submission and devotion to him. In other words, the more that I am willing to put myself under God, under his word, and call him my king, and live that way, the more I do that, the more power is going to be in my life. The, thing, the more things that God can change in my life, the more, the more things that he can make alive in my life, I've tried. I've tried living my life on my own. Because if, if you're not doing this, you're kind of your own king. And I'm not real good at being my own king, if you know what I mean. It doesn't work out real good. I've tried to rule my own life. 